Hello and welcome back to Small Talk. We've got a great episode ahead for you as we speak with a pair from Illinois Wesleyan. I'm your host, Katie Mucci. Each week on this show, we highlight the past and present of Division Three, with both current and former student athletes joining to talk about their experiences, their favorite on-campus spots, the craziest road trip stories, and more. This week, we've got Evan Schneider, a current member of the men's basketball team, and Brian Crabtree, an Illinois Wesleyan Hall of Famer, joining us. We talk about the academic experience, their runs in the NCAA tournament, why they love Division Three, and more. Thanks for joining this week. Now it's time for some small talk. Hi, everybody. My name is Evan Schneider, and I'm a current member of the men's basketball program at Illinois Wesleyan. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Crabtree. I'm a former member from 1997 of the men's basketball team. Uh, currently, I live in Normal, Illinois, really close to campus, and uh, I'm a financial advisor in town. Awesome. Well, thank you both for hopping on here. I am excited to chat with you about this. I know um, we've got about 20, I guess, 25 years difference almost in your, when you were on the team. So or maybe you didn't want to hear that, Brian. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. That's probably not a good way to get on yeah. good with you. But yeah, I guess uh, we ought to be real, right? <laughs> I can do math. Um, well, thank you guys so much for hopping on here. Excited to chat and hear about your experiences and, and how things at Illinois Wesleyan have changed over the last couple of decades. So with that being said, I'm going to start out with you, Evan. Let's talk about when you and your teammates are hanging out on campus, when you guys want to go have some fun, what are kind of the spots on campus or around campus that you guys go to? And then Brian, follow up and let us know, or any of those same spots you guys hung out or what was your spot? Uh, sure. Uh, one thing I'll say at first is that I think we're an extremely close knit team and, you know, best buddies with everybody else uh, on the team. Some of the places I'd say we frequent one is a given our senior house. Uh, several of, of our seniors live. Um, Brian, I don't know if you had this, but greenhouse, it's on like East Walnut, kind of right behind uh, the Ames library where it is now. Uh, right. Oh, next to I'm familiar right. with where it is, but we did not okay. have that back in the day. No. Um, so we're there now. It's probably, Probably no reno renovations have been done on that house at all uh, since since whenever it was made. But um, that's one of the best places that we all, we all just hang out as a team. I'd say outside of just our own homes, uh, Muggsy's is a good place. Tommy's underneath the uh, student union building is a great place to eat and watch some games. But uh, for the most part, it's, it's together at the senior house at Greenhouse uh, with all the guys. Well, it's funny you mentioned Tommy's, and I know Tommy's now, but back in the day, Tommy's was actually the Memorial Gym my freshman year where they used to play basketball before Fred Young was even created. So, oh, really? yeah, that, that's going way back. But, um, yeah, so, you know, it's I think things have changed a little bit. When I was playing, um, a lot of the players were in fraternities, so there were a lot of Sigma guys, so we spent a lot of time at the Sigma guy house. Um, I know the dugout's still around, so we would spend time in the dugout uh, occasionally if Saga was closed, uh, which would be the cafeteria. And then, like you, I'm sure, spent a lot of time at Shirk, both practicing, working out, and in the training room. So if we're going, if I'm coming out to Bloomington Normal and want to go out and grab a bite to eat, and maybe Evan for you when the parents are in town so you get a little more budget for that bite to eat, what are the hot spots that I need to come visit? Uh. Sure. Well, Muggsy's, I had mentioned it before. Uh, it's a nice bar and grill place. We go almost every weekend when I was a freshman, sophomore and, and uh, relax and have some wings and, and watch whatever sports game uh, we're on at that time. Other places, there's Fiesta Ranchero, Los Patrios, which are some of those classic Mex Mexican restaurants, which we just devour food at after some of our practices. Um, and then some nicer ones, the Rock Restaurant, I like a lot and also the Still. That, that's funny because Muggsy's was literally probably a hundred yards from where we lived and we never went there. I don't know why it doesn't make sense, but uh, it makes sense that you guys are going there now. Um, yeah. M a lot of those places you mentioned weren't, weren't even establishments back in the day. So I would say Avani's is still there. It's probably not as popular as it was, but that was a huge place for us to go, especially, I'm, I don't know if they still have it, but all you can eat spaghetti on Tuesdays, we would pretty much go every Tuesday and get our money's worth for sure. Um, and then there was uh, like, obviously I had Papa John's, uh, we'd order that a lot. Garcia's Pizza is no longer in business. So there's a lot of establishments that are no longer around that we used to frequent. Um, but yeah, I would say Ivani's if I had to pick one back in the day is probably where we went with our families and just with the players. 
Oh, you can eat uh, pasta is a good deal. I think I've actually been to Avani's. I think, like I said, I used to, I worked at the Missouri Valley Conference. I made it out to Illinois State plenty of times. Um, so have have seen that food scene a little bit. Um, now let's talk about traveling. So one of the funny things during this podcast has always been ex- comparing travel stories. For some schools, it's been pretty good the whole time. For other schools, it's been a vast difference from when the former student athlete went to the current. So I'm going to let you kick this one off, Brian. When you guys were traveling, what was that like for you? Obviously, Division Three, you're not taking flights everywhere. You're not taking super long road trips necessarily. Um, but what was travel like for you? Were you guys in vans, buses? What was all of that like? Yeah, well, I know what it looks like today because I've seen their buses, which are really nice. But back in the day, we just had a set of vans that we would all pile into and um the coaches would drive or sometimes the trainers would drive us back and forth if we went to Carthage or one of our longer trips then they would charter an actual bus but yeah for the most part it was vans all around and you know funny story I just remember one of our teammates Andy Boyden who was probably a little bit taller than me was the only person that we know that could actually sleep sitting in the van without like leaning against something because it's super uncomfortable you have these bench seats and you're trying to like go to sleep and yeah, so I always gave him a hard time, but I think we were all jealous uh, because of his ability to sleep anywhere. And when you say taller than you, I looked you up. You're six seven, aren't you? Yeah, I think Andy was six, six eight, six nine. You know. <laughs> wow, his head probably just rested on the roof of the car. You don't <laughs> yeah. even have to yeah. lay it back. Um, what about you? He said he know you. He knows you're in buses now, Evan. Is that pretty nice? Yep, we have, I think it's just a set of two. Uh, we call it the Victory Wagons. Uh, how that name came about, I'm not exactly sure, but um, they're 20 to 30 person passenger buses. Uh, we all get in. It's funny. Uh, I don't know, if, Brian, you had this in the vans, but everyone has their like kind of select spot. Like you get there in the first day of class and you have your desk and no one else can sit in that desk. So everyone sits in the same spot for the, you know, throughout the whole year and that's pretty much, uh, pretty much what we we travel with every to every game. Some days, uh, if we're going to Carthage or uh, Carroll, a little bit farther, we might charter a bus. Or for some some of the longer trips, like going out to Ohio or uh, South Dakota last year, we'll charter a bus. But it's the victory wagons that take us around for the most part. That's funny. And Brian, back when you're in the vans, is there a coach you didn't want to ride with? someone you knew was yes. driving and you're like yes. you know what i'm yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you ask that yeah uh coach bridges who was our head coach and was at wesleyan for 30 plus years uh had a lead foot and you know we didn't lose much fortunately but when we did you didn't want to be in his car coming home because it didn't matter what the weather was he was just getting there as soon as possible so yeah i would say coach bridges is one that you didn't want to be in the car with or the van with yeah like me, like you said didn't no, lose no much issues. yeah good yeah. good <laughs> Awesome. Now let's talk about academics. So go back to campus, talk about the student part of student athlete. Um, Evan, what's your major right now? So I'm uh, double majoring in finance and both computer science. Wow. Brian, what was your major when you were back in school? I was a business major with a minor in risk management and financial services. Okay. So maybe a tiny bit of overlap with that. I see some, some finance business and both. Um, and Evan, I'll, I'll go back to you for this first part. What, maybe, I don't know if it was academics or athletics specifically, but what made you choose Illinois Wesleyan when you were picking your college? Uh, funny you mentioned that. I was kind of set on a couple other schools and Illinois Wesleyan came pretty late in my recruitment. Um, I might've been the fastest recruit to commit uh, in Illinois Wesleyan history. I think that it came mid-January and I was committed by senior night of that year. Um, but really what Illinois Wesleyan has is it check the three boxes for me for college, uh, academics, uh, athletics, and then social life. Um, it has a top notch academic program. I'm able to uh, complete two majors within my four years here and, and do so uh, pretty well. Uh, it's got a fantastic athletic program uh, behind it. It's just years of great experience and great alumni like Brian himself. And also the social life, lots of D3s, unfortunately, are kind of spread out into small towns where there's nothing else around it. What makes us nice is what we spoke about earlier is ISU is maybe a mile down the road. So you have the big, uh, you know, college campus vibe coming from ISU that you're not just secluded in, you know, the 1,500 kids that go to Wesleyan. And how about for you, Brian, when you were looking at schools back um, before you started I 
IWU. What made you want to choose that? Yeah, uh, very similar to what Evan said. So I, I grew up in Wheaton, where Wheaton College is one of the rivals for Wesleyan. And so I had kind of narrowed it down to the two schools. And, you know, Coach Bridges and Coach Steinberg, my aunt and uncle live in town. Uh, Coach Bridges came up and watched me multiple times. And I just liked the vibe of the coaching staff. I came down for the visit, loved the players. Um, ate at Monocle's Pizza down here or in Bloomington, which is like, I always kind of say that was my tip me over the edge. Um, but yeah, I, I think Wesleyan at the time was ranked number three in the country when I was in high school, which was awesome. Um, academics are top notch. Uh, so it really checked all the boxes. So uh, I came down and watched Wesleyan play Augustana at Fred Young, which is the old field house. And it was a smaller place, but it was absolutely packed. And there was a wall at one end, there were students sitting up on top. And after I left there, I'm like, there's no way I cannot go here. And uh, that was kind of the deciding factor. Awesome. And how do you think now that you're out in the professional world, how do you think your time at, at Illinois Wesleyan prepared you for maybe on the academic side of things? How did that prepare you for a career and everything? Yeah, I think, you know, like we talked about, you get a great education from Wesleyan. I think equally important to that, uh, there's just such a really good alumni network within. So, you know, I still stay in touch with a lot of my friends from back in college. And from a business standpoint, you know, there's been a a big net that we've been able to cast. And um, so I would say in preparation from an education standpoint, it was great. And then for me as the business owner, just the connections that that have made not only from when I was there, but other alumni um, has been really nice. And we talk to kids about that, you know, when they're in school or, or even if they're being recruited, just talking about how you have to look beyond those four years and see what it's going to set you up for. And I, I think Wesleyan has been a fantastic place. It was for me. And I think it continues to be that way. Great. Now we're going to do some story time. So the first thing I want to hear from both of you is your funniest or craziest story from your time on the team, but appropriate for this podcast. Um, so Brian, I'll have you kick it off. Oh, shoot. I was hoping you'd have Evan go first. I, I was having a hard time. I mean, there's lots of good stories. You know, you put the inappropriate. There's probably some inappropriate I can't talk about. One of the funnier things kind of you talked about, like, pre-game and where we went there was uh evan did you guys ever go to the colonial uh restaurant up near it's in naperville when you go up to play north central or wheaton or any of those no our our pre-game meals stick to either pop belly or jason's deli okay both of which weren't there when i was there so <laughs> for whatever reason anytime we went up to play in the chicago area we'd stop at the colonial which is it's a really nice just kind of a diner and uh, and this actual story happened before I got to Wesleyan. I was a senior in high school, and Brady Knight, who was a freshman at Wesleyan at the time on the basketball team, who's actually now my brother-in-law, he married my sister. The story goes, he went to the Colonial. They have this kitchen sink, which is it's like a big tub of ice cream, like, I don't know, 12 scoops with hot fudge and whipped cream. That's what he ate for his pregame meal because he wasn't playing very much. Well, I think we were playing North Central and up big at halftime. So he gets in the game and just hearing him talk about how terrible he felt after eating the kitchen sink. So, you know, that, that is something that has brought up, been brought up dozens of times since we graduated. Maybe it's better they're sticking to pot belly and Jason Stelly then instead of giving him right. free reign on the ice cream. Yeah, Evan, Evan, what about you? What's your funniest or craziest story? Uh, there's a bunch that stick out to me. One in particular, I remember my freshman year, uh, it was some morning practice and we had um, one of the former players, Cole Corey, who's just a goofball and a super funny guy. Call, we were doing some sort of scrimmage or some just half court offense, defense, and he caught it on the block. And then as soon as he caught it, his legs spread out and immediately went into some sort of split. And it was the slowest split that I've ever seen, but the play stopped and it was like agonizing for him. Uh, and for some reason in the moment, it was one of the funnier things that I, uh, myself and the rest of the team had seen. Um, so that, that's just one that jumps out to me. If we're on the topic of some eating stories, like Brian said, just recently uh, when we were in L.A., uh, this was after all the games. So fortunately, I didn't have to play through this. But uh, Harrison Wilson and Nick Roper bet me uh, a few uh, about $100 to finish this whole plate of nachos. And it took some time for me to finish it. But. I think that would go down as another great story for the, myself and the two other guys and some of the other guys that were watching too. 
we piggybacking on that it seems like there's a lot of eating stories back in 1995 which would have been my sophomore year we were in florida for new year's eve and there was a restaurant bar that had a ten dollar all you can eat wings and so our whole team comes in gets the wristband and i think within i don't know 10 minutes the whole thing was cleared out so i think they they were not not, none too happy that the wesley basketball team showed up that night (laughs) And we still talk about that to today. And then the night went on. It was New Year's Eve and um, probably can't talk about the rest of it. But <laughs> it was a good start to a great evening that that we uh, actually just a couple of days ago, we were talking about doing a 30th reunion uh, next year to kind of celebrate that that fun night that we had. That's awesome. Um, so those were funny or crazy stories, but I want to hear some favorite memories, too. So during your time at the program, when you look back or when you look at, you're still in Evan, um, when you look at your time at the program, what is something that sticks out to you? It's just a memory that that means a lot. So Evan, you first, and then Brian, you can follow up. Uh, one that stands out in particular, I'd say, was our Yeshiva game back in, that would have been December uh, 22, um, when we went to New York and, and finally played them. I think they were uh, ranked first in the country at the time. We might have been like fifth or fourth or somewhere around that. But just the whole experience around that and the hype leading up to it, um, I remember getting off the charter van or the charter bus and stepping out in front of the athletic center up in uh, in New York and Yeshiva. And there was just a crowd and line of people waiting to get into the door. And it honestly, it felt like you're an NBA player. You know, there's people sitting in the, uh, the crowd and they're like picking out people like, oh, there's Lambesis, that's Laritz, that's Cody Mitchell, whoever it might be. But um, just playing in that game and, and being there in that atmosphere was a great experience. And I have nothing but the utmost respect for all the players on Yeshiva and all their fans. So it was a tremendous experience. Very cool. I was okay. not able to watch that game, but I was traveling and I listened to it out on the radio and it sounded like a pretty, pretty awesome atmosphere and just a good experience, not only for you guys, but also for Yeshiva and, and yeah. their fans who I think you guys kind of shell shocked them. Um <laughs> Because they were number one in the country, I think, at the time. Right. And they had, uh, what was it, a 50-game win streak or maybe a little bit longer than that? Um, Yeah. So a good battle all around and a great game. But uh, happy for us that we came out on the win, too. Yeah. Uh, I would have to say for me, so I was fortunate. Two of my four years, we did make the Final Four. So uh, that was the only time we really chartered planes. So we went to the Bloomington Normal Airport, jump on a private plane, um, show up in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, which was fun, just the flight in itself, but then getting there and, and getting to, um, I don't know, just be a part of that atmosphere. And, you know, there was a host family there. They We had dinners together. We had a, a banquet for the final four. So both years were great. My junior year, unfortunately, we lost in, in the semifinals on on kind of a, well, it was a tip-in uh, versus Rowan. That, that was very painful to this day because a lot of my good friends are still on that team. And then the next year we weren't expected to be all that good. And we just kind of gelled and everybody came together and we ended up winning that next year, but tough loss my junior year. But um, both of those trips were just amazing. Never, never will forget them. Yeah. Speaking about the year you won it, what is that experience like getting to win a national championship? Well, it was kind of a long experience. I know, uh, I think Coach Bridges was quoted in the paper after we lost to Rowan, or no, it was after the year we won it, just saying that when we were flying back from Roanoke after we had lost uh, to Rowan in that tip-in, fortunately we came back and beat Franklin Marshall in the third place consolation game, which none of us were very excited to play in. And I don't think they even have a consolation anymore, but we ended up winning that by, I think, 30 points. So it left a good taste in our mouth uh, for us. But on the way back, um, I just was telling coach how much I'd like to get us or help us get back the next year. And I think he kind of laughed it off because we graduated, I think four of our five seniors and a couple of our key players were JV players the year before. So, you know, that process from when we lost that heartbreaker to Rowan throughout that next season was, was a really fun trip to be on it. We only lost two, two games our my entire senior year and to be able to get back to, uh, to Salem where, where that was when, I think it's now in Fort Wayne. It was in Salem for a number of years, but just to have that experience and then, you know, to win your last game of your college career and get a national championship was was pretty awesome. Brian, did you, like, during the playoff run, those first games, the round of 64, the 32, the 316, was Wesleyan hosting those two? 
Yeah, so we hosted the first, I believe, four games um, at Shirk Center. Because so my freshman year is when we were at Fred Young, the old field house. And then sophomore year is when we transitioned into Shirk Center, which is, you know, still an amazing facility. And and uh, you can't believe that it's about 25 years old either, just with how nice they keep it. Um, so, yeah, we hosted those. And then um, I can't even remember. I should remember all the places that we went, but eventually made our way back to uh, to Salem. Right. Awesome. Yeah, I remember that same year as the Yeshiva game when we made the run to the Elite Eight, the, just the atmosphere. We had hosted every game up until that point at uh, the Shirk Center. It was great atmosphere and a lot of fun during that, too. Yeah. Very cool. So now we are going to kind of start to wrap this up and talk about Division Three. Obviously, this podcast is part of the 50th anniversary of Division Three. We've been doing 50 episodes of this podcast throughout the year to celebrate the anniversary um, and hear from current and former student athletes. So I want to hear first from both of you what it means to you to be or to have been a Division Three student athlete. I know, um, Brian, you talked a little bit about some of your teammates were in fraternities and things like that that might not be possible at a different level just because there's so much time commitment. So Brian, I'll have you kick it off. Um, what is it? What did it mean for you during your college career to be a D3 student athlete in terms of what things you got to do or got to be a part of or or what it meant for your your experience yeah i mean it's it's pretty special right where you can go and and it truly is a student athlete right so you could actually uh this is kind of comical but i was on the golf team back in the late 90s and evan i'm sure knows that right now the western golf team for the last decade has been a national powerhouse we were nowhere near that but i was able to have the time and and the coaching staff let us play multiple sports which is unheard of typically in the division one level so we like to say we laid the groundwork for the golf team of today uh but between those two sports and being able to be in a fraternity um it was just i don't know i actually have a senior in college right now playing division one volleyball and i have a sophomore that's at wesleyan that's doing cross country and track and, and kind of comparing their experiences um I look back on my time and, you know, if I had to do it over again, I would choose blessing every time just because of that balance that you get. Not that she hasn't had a good experience. It's just different reasons, but it's just so much more athletic focused and education, not secondary, but um, we had, and I don't know, Evan, you can speak to this, but we had several um, pre-med people on our team. And I think a lot of times that doesn't happen in division one programs just because you have all the labs and they don't want you to miss practices, et cetera. So I think Division Three just opens up the opportunity to get a great education, continue to play the sport that you're passionate about, and and be able to do some extracurricular activities like uh, fraternities or join other clubs on campus. Yeah, I agree with everything what uh, what Brian said. Um, going into college basketball, I knew that uh, I wasn't going to become a pro, and I think most guys at this level understand that they're not going to become a pro. So I want to be able to you know get the best experience. Uh, possible when we within four years uh, and Wesleyan and lots of D3s provide that uh, giving a great competitive environment on the court and athletics but then also being able to get a tremendous education but also being able to pursue some of my passions that I have um, I don't really want to go in life just being a one-trick pony only knowing basketball and only doing basketball um, I think the D3 experience and Illinois Wesleyan has allowed me to explore other things that I like to do to keep up on those things while also maintaining uh, a great athletic experience and a competitive one as well. Awesome. And like I said, we've, we're 50 years down in Division Three, and we've got many, many more to come. So when you look at the future of Division Three, what do you see or what do you hope to see for, for where Division Three is going? And Evan, I'll stick with you first. I might need a couple more years to, you know, really get a good judgment of, of where it might be. I might need some years on the outside. But uh, just continuing of what I, I, I just said before, that it's, it's, a, it's a place where students uh, can have great athletic opportunities while also being able to pursue their passions, uh, get interested in what interests them, not just necessarily of what the athletic department or the coaches of uh, the team wants. Uh, we were able to pursue a lot of different uh, educations and academics. Like Ryan said, we do have a couple of pre-meds on our team too. Um, but uh, I see it as a place where people can expand as, as true young men and young women. Uh, and I think that's where I stand with the future of it. 
And Brian? Yeah. Katie, I was going to say, I, I would agree. I, I'm looking backwards now a lot more years than Evan, but um, I see Division Three always having a great place for, for students because the majority of student athletes in high school are not getting Division One scholarships. And this is a great way for them to continue that on without just doing club sports at a bigger school where it's a competitive, organized. Um, and then you can kind of pick your path. If you're, if you're kind of, a lot of the Wesleyan athletes are kind of borderline whether or not they're going to get a scholarship to division one, or maybe they could, and they choose more to go with the path of education and um, athletics at the same time. So I don't see that change. And I think division three is a great path for the right type of people. Um, and again, like we've talked about, it just allows you to do just more than that one particular sport. You can do a lot of things and just have the college experience without being so driven towards one um, particular facet. That is a perfect way to end this podcast. Thank you both so much again for joining me. I had a great, great time hearing about your stories and glad you two got to chat a little bit about some commonalities. Um, hopefully, Brian, you're, you're in normal, so you get to make it out to some games, I assume. So I do, you... yeah. So our, our family has always been, it's it's crazy. You know, our girls were wearing their little cheerleader outfits back when they were, <laughs> you know, five years old. And now I've got two in college and one that's a sophomore in high school. So the years go by quick, Evan. Just uh, cherish these last moments of college. And, and uh, I'm trying to. I mean, yeah. You'll look, <laughs> yeah, you'll look back on them. They're, they're such, it's such a great time of life. And, and again, I think you're going to have a, a core group of friends uh, from within Wesleyan and not only that, but the, the alumni network as well, that is what makes Wesleyan so special. Awesome. Well, Evan, I know you have a game in a couple of days. You're thick of, in a thick of conference play coming up. So best of luck with the rest of your season. Brian, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your vacation. Um, and <laughs> thank thanks you, again for both coming on here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Good you. Good luck, Evan. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hope to see you soon. To everyone listening, thanks for tuning into this episode of Small Talk. We post new episodes every Thursday. To follow along with everything Division 3, you can find us on social media at NCAA D3 or NCAA DIII. Make sure to join the conversation with us all year long by using the hashtag DIII50. Have a great day, and we'll see you for some more Small Talk next week.